G'day there, podcaster. Liam here. I'm back in the saddle this evening, and what a fun show. I mean, uh, we did an impression off with Jackson, who called through the other day. He's really good. Um, We spoke to some people who caught the cheetah. Man, that was brutal. And met a guy who actually captured the original succulent Chinese meal. Enjoy. Who's ready to have some fun? Ben, I am. I'm ready for fun. Across Australia, this is Ben, Liam and Bell's Late Drive! On Nova. Good evening, Australia. We are getting so close to that Friday. Now, let's get stuck into it. Uh, Liam, earlier in the week, on Monday, you were out sick with gastro. I was. <laughs> and we were looking for an impressionist replacement because you're the guy on TikTok, you're doing impressions. Don't let me into man, Potter. Yeah. Did you say do a Snape impression? Or I did didn't. I just heard impression and I started doing one. And so we said, 13, 20, 14, give us a buzz if you can do impressions. We wanted to replace you on the show. And we got a great caller called Jackson, give us a buzz. This is him doing... UFC superstar Conor McGregor. Have a listen. Absolutely. How you doing, son? Oh, nice to see you. you know, man. Conor McGregor here, the notorious one. A lot of people are saying, a lot of people are thinking, you can absolutely bounce the head of the <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's good, isn't he? He was very he was good. really good. Now, look, I'll admit, Liam, you're pretty good at your impressions as well. So what we were thinking tonight is we have an impression off. I like it. We've got Jackson back. Are you ready to go? Always ready. Good to hear. Liam, you ready to go? I'm ready to go. And I want to say on the outset, Jackson, I, I heard you the other night and you had me shaking in my boots, my friend. Game recognises game and my friend, you're well, well, very good at voices. Thank you, thank you, sir. I've certainly scrolled through uh, your Instagram and um, if there's one that I need to shout out right here, right now, it's the Liam Gallagher. I mean, oh, thank you. you're uh, See, look, a very talented it's, man. It's Look, a nice handshake <laughs> at the start. This is all above board. This is what we like to see. <laughs> all right, let's get into it. We are going to go best of three impressions. I will be the judge, and I'll go to Belle if I need a second opinion. Um, (laughs) Jackson, I'm going to get you to do the first impression, okay? Okay. Now, these are all going to be randomly generated by the computer program in front of me, okay? I did not pick these. Jackson, can you give me Trump? Trump. All right, Donald, where are you? Well, let me tell you something. They want to... Throw me in the brig, lock me up there and throw away the key. I top my Trump Tower and my ivory Trump Tower, which is where I'm going to prison. But let me tell you something. It's big, it's beautiful, it's great, and it's as comfortable as a jail kid come. Wow. That's good, Jackson. That's Donald. That's very good. All right, let's see how Liam responds. Liam, you have to do Jackie Chan. I'm not doing Jackie Chan. You're not going to do Jackie Chan? I'm not. I'm not going to do, for obvious reasons, I'm not going to do Jackie Chan. Are you going to forfeit the point? Well, yeah, I think I'm going to have to. Oh, he's forfeited a point. Wow. (laughs) I didn't see that coming. Wow, Jackson, that means you get the first point. This is huge. Okay. All right, oh, wow. Jackson, can you give me Michael Caine? My name is Michael Caine, and not a lot of people know that. And I couldn't possibly tell me another fat man with the pointy little ear, the Lamborghini, then. Wow, very good. Uh, uh, listen there, Jackson. No, that was a very good... Uh, no. <laughs> Zipper, you don't well, get to do impression. I was just trying to sneak. I mean, both of them are in my wheelhouse. Mm. Trump and Michael Caine. You gave me Jackie Chan. You, you serious? get who you're given, okay? I'm not choosing these. It is a random computer program. And Liam, your next impression is got to be Serena Williams. <laughs> so don't laugh, Jackson, because they're randomly generated. And I'm also going to forfeit that point. But Whoa! once again, obviously, oh, it, feels, it doesn't feel right. Okay, Whoa. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We've just got to uphold a certain standard. That means the point goes to Jackson and he wins the impression off on Nova. But look, just for honour, give us one more. The computer program wants you to do Christopher Walken. I mean, I could. It's <laughs> one, it's a gift from your great granddaddy. <laughs> and now, little man, I get to watch. 
Oh, it's yeah. Real it's Jackson, I really like it. I want to have a beer with you because even his, so like, even his like trigger words are like the same. Mm. You two having a beer together oh. would be so hideous. <laughs> I think that would be the most entertaining beer two, two <laughs> gentlemen could have, in my opinion. To go into the song, though, Liam, do you, want to, do you want to give you one more shot? Oh, yeah, why not? One more shot. One randomly generated <laughs> impression. <laughs> All right, here we go. One more for Liam. Give me a Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> That's a deep cut. I haven't even thought of him in a long time. I forbid wow. the point. I forbid the point. Uh, in the podcast, I'll do a good Osama for you. No. Really do it the air. no, it's not on air, but I'll just do it in the podcast. Yeah. Give us a buzz on 13 24 10. How did you catch the cheater? There is a man who is currently suing Apple for millions of dollars because he was caught cheating by his wife after messages he thought he deleted on his iPhone, which he did delete, had already synced up through the cloud onto the family laptop. She logged in, found the messages Whoa. between him and a sex worker. I mean, how's the ghoul on that guy? Though? Just being like, oh, that's Apple's fault. Like, he's cheating on his wife well, and he's trying to sue them. Absolutely wild, because his, his argument is... The word deleted, when it says, do you want to delete these messages? And you say, yes, delete means it's gone. And it should warn you, in, and he, this is his argument, it should warn you that it should say, like, this could be backed up onto your family computer, FYI. <laughs> That's his argument. So he's going for millions. 13, 24, 10, how did you catch the cheater? Sarah in Brizzy, how'd you do it? Hello, guys. How are you? Good. Um, so pretty much um, my boyfriend at the time a couple of years ago, he, um, I got a Snapchat message from him, um, and when I opened it, it wasn't actually from him. It was from his new girlfriend at the time. And with that Snapchat that she sent me, the text came along with it, have you effed him yet? Because I have. Whoa. So Ooh. it was just and sort that, of baiting that you? That was it. Mm. Yeah, oh, right. Yeah. I'm a oh, psycho. yeah, not good at all, Sarah. Um, yeah. We appreciate yeah. you calling, though, to share. Did you want some movie tickets? That would be awesome. Yeah, you can go see The Watchers in cinemas now. We have got more prizes to give away. 13 24 10 is our number. How did you catch the cheater? Zoe in Melbourne, how did you catch the cheater? Uh, my husband, of, well, we've been together for about 12 years at the time. He went out with the boys the night before, and it was about 8 o'clock in the morning. He got home late, mm. got a phone call, and I was next to him, so I could hear, uh, I could hear what she was saying. She was yeah. saying, oh, you know, it was so great last night. You know, when can we catch up again? And he just said, hung up and told me it was the wrong number. So oh, when my it was in- God. When he was in the shower, I got the number off his phone and I yeah. called her a bit later and, yeah, she confirmed that she'd been out with my husband the Whoa. night before. And, and Zoe, was that like the first, you know, not, not an excuse, but was that the first night they'd met and she was just calling him that morning? Oh, I didn't really go into details with her. Because she was a little bit scared at, uh, initially. Mm. Um, and I said, look, I have no problems with you. <laughs> you know, yeah. you haven't done anything wrong. It's yep. my husband that's done the wrong thing. And she just went, oh, look, I'm really sorry. And obviously I won't keep in contact with him. Wow. <laughs> Are you still together, yeah. Zoe? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, right yeah, we're, we're yeah. Good, yeah. Good on you, Zoe, because men are pigs. Men are pigs. Oh, here we go. Absolutely. And we've always said that here. Boys oh. night, hey? <laughs> you piece of S. Uh... You just can't say that after every call about guys cheating. Well, we've been doing it for years, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't make you any better. Zoe, thank you for sharing. Samantha in Melbourne, tell us, how'd you catch the cheater? I used to work at a cafe and this guy would come in with a woman and they'd be quite flirtatious. Um, and then he would also come into the same cafe with his family and his wife. Oh. Um, so my colleagues took it upon themselves to write on the serviette, he's cheating on you. Whoa! <laughs> just on the serviette? That's just like throwing a little hand grenade there onto yeah, the table. see, Samantha, that's amazing. Yeah. But, um, I know. <laughs> like, did you, did you feel weird about, like, putting your foot in, in their life or do you think that was your job to do that? Um, I personally probably wouldn't have done it, but, I mean... She felt like it was the right thing to do, and 
the woman actually did come back and, and thank her. So, I mean, well, yeah, she I mean, it. <laughs> I think she, you know, you, you want to know if your partner's cheating on you. She could have also done yeah. the thing where, like, gone up to the table and been like, oh, were you, you know, the iced mm. latte, Armand? You know, you were here with that brunette girl last week. Is that right? Then again, the only thing is, I'm not defending this guy, but unless there was, like, kissing involved, how do you know that he well, wasn't yeah. just with, like, his That's true. family friends? You know, he, it might have been his sister, Samantha. You sure it wasn't his sister and they were just really close? <laughs> On arrival. Okay, they were kissing but on arrival. Like, Some people kiss their this sister. Is, this is the thing, though. What if what if they were in an open relationship and then you've done this and then it's like, it, like well, I suppose you don't would, know what's oh, going yeah, on. Yeah, but if it's an open relationship, they're just like, oh, yeah, no worries. Mm. Mm. True, true, true. Samantha, thank you very much. Julie in Barizzi, how'd you catch the cheetah? <laughs> um, so my boyfriend at the time, it was about 15 years ago, dropped me off for a night shift on the Gold Coast. Mm-hmm. And I was going to go back to his parents' house in the morning. Um, and I didn't realize I'd left my phone at home. Um, so during the night, he messaged me and said, I'm not feeling very well. We'll catch up, you know, in a couple of days. Mm. I rocked up to his parents' house unaware and walked into his, um, his room that he was staying in. And there was a girl topless on the bed. He was like, oh no, she was feeling sick, blah, blah, blah. And because it was his parents' house, I didn't make a scene. But um, a couple of days later, she had left her digital camera under the bed and I had a look and there were photos of them in the act. And then he still tried denying it. (laughs) They're photoshopped. They're photoshopped. They are. They didn't have photoshop back then. (laughs) Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, obviously. But then then also, I mean... To think that he's doing that at mum and dad's house. Like, yeah. what? Yeah, because, like, did they know? Oh. Like, it's, it's, yeah. Oh. I'm sorry, Julie, but thanks for giving us a buzz. We do appreciate it, Julie. 13, 24, 10. Amelia in Melbourne, go for it. Hi, guys. Miss you in the morning. Oh, oh thanks, I mean, Amelia. But I hope you're enjoying it in the drive time. <laughs> Oh, I try to, but I've got a little one, so it's you know bed and bath time. Well, Amelia, you know what? I've got a kid as well, and I know it's tough, but you can always <laughs> listen to the pod podcast. Yes, Donna. very yeah. good. <laughs> in. Um, so I, my story was similar in that my my ex husband was in Sydney. Mm-hmm. I opened my daughter's iPad to help her with her homework, mm-hmm. and found text messages with photos and explicit text between my ex-husband and his brother's wife. Oh. Oh. I, mean, I mean, that's like a gunshot. I mean, that's yes. just surely your ears are ringing at that point. I mean, that's like something from a movie. Amelia, talk us through the ramifications. So brother's wife. So ha- what happens yep. after you find this? Um, so And so what they were doing is they were going to Sydney, both of them for work, supposedly, mm. and that's when they were meeting up. Oh. Um so, well, I got him to fly home and pack his clothes and give me the key to the house. Yeah. So that was that was the end of that. Um, the wife, the, the brother took the wife back after kicking her out for a few months. Oh. Um, so she's still in the family? Yeah, she's, she's still in the family. Um, and... Um, I've also I've later found out this was all a year ago, and I've yeah. later found out that they were together um, 25 years ago when she was still with the brother. Oh, yeah. Started seeing the brother before yeah. they were married, and that this has gone on and off for years, wow. uh. and that there is potential that one of his one or two of both of his brother's kids are, in fact, Whoa. my ex-husband. Okay. Oh, my God. I mean, that's, that's a fair bit to process it's there, lot. Amelia. I mean, And I kind God. of felt you were trying to explain it, and then, yeah, there's a lot to explain there. Are you, I mean, I, I just want to – are you okay, Amelia? I mean, that's so horrible. <laughs> yeah, look, I, thank you. I'm good. My, my sole purpose has been to look after my little girl, who was six at the time when I found out. Mm. Um, so she's – absolutely kept me going. Um, so, yeah, look, I thank you. I have done a lot of processing, a lot of healing. I'm in a really good place now, as is, in, as is my daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've just sold the family house. We've moved into a new house to create new memories. So, yeah, um, the, the saddest part is that I... You know, there's times where I don't get to be with her because she's with her dad. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Of well, look- and and of course, your 
Hang on. His brother's sister is still in the family. Like, that. that's wild. Yeah. And look, yeah. I, I, you've literally pulled your heart and soul out for the last three minutes, Amelia, and we really appreciate it. And I really wish we had something other than Garfield tickets to give you. But you know what? Oh. You could take your daughter to go see Garfield. <laughs> oh, she would love that. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Go check it out. It's in cinemas now. Thanks for getting involved. Amazing. Thanks, guys. No worries. We are getting extremely juicy stories right now. How did you catch the cheetah? I mean, I think we just got to keep going with this. Emma in Melbourne, what happened to you? Um, it was actually my boyfriend at the month, at the time. Sorry, mm. my husband's downstairs and he doesn't like me. Talk. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, so oh, I'm sorry, trying Emma. to hide. Oh, sorry. <laughs> quick, tell your story. Tell it quick. I know. Um, yeah, so it's actually like his mum found the earring on the couch yeah. and said, this is your earring. I said, no, it's not. <gasps> and she's like, oh, um. No, it's not actually. It was another girl. Oh. So he had another girl over and I'm like, what? And I actually ended up calling her and she's like, oh my God, you're so annoying. You actually called the other night when we were together. And I'm like, what the hell? And she's like, I'm going over there right now wearing my lacy panties. Oh, so hang on. So hang on. Were you the other girl or it was your partner? No, I was with him for six years. Six Whoa. years. Oh. Okay. And then you got onto her and she said that, oh, wow, oh, that was a wild bust one. Yeah. out the red knickers. Yeah, gee whiz. Yeah, crazy. Oh, oh Emma, yeah, thanks yeah. for the call. I hope it's okay that you called us. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully that's all right. Uh, Caitlin in Sydney, how'd you catch the cheetah? So um, we were visiting my dad, me and my boyfriend at the time, and we had just gone on a hike. And we're telling my dad about it, and I was like, oh, my, he has photos on his phone. And I grabbed his phone, not thinking, and went on photos, and there was all screenshots of Tinder messages asking <gasps> for girls' Snapchats and everything. Dude, Why would he be screenshotting that? To save the girl's Snapchats for after when he wasn't with me, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. And then keeping in mind, Dad's there as well. So what did Dad have yeah, to say about so it? I, I just grabbed his phone and walked out, and he had nothing to do because he was in front of my dad. So he just sat there and knew what was about to happen. Yeah, and right. I didn't do anything in front of my dad because I didn't want my dad to whack him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad might have left him out in the bush by the sounds. <laughs> uh, Kayla in Brizzy, what happened? You caught a cheetah. Hey, yes. Yeah, so I was dating a older guy for about a year. We lived together. He was on the rental agreement, all that. Uh, ended up breaking up. And then I found out he was married the entire time. That's crazy. How? Kayla, okay, run me through. How, how did you manage this relationship while he had another family? I don't know. Like, he was home every night. We both did, like, night shifts. But he would always pick me up from work at 3 in the morning. So he had, I, a, he had, sorry to jump in there, he had a second family, well, a first family, you were the second family, and then you saw him every night still. Yeah, he would he would be at home with me every night when I'd finish work. It must be a situation where he was telling his first family, yeah. like, oh, I'm working, and then he, that's when he was with yeah, you. Yeah, working does he like, sleep? How does he make any money? And what? what's, you know, <laughs> even, even the simple things, like the good stuff on Netflix that week. Like is he what is he doubling up? Twice. Is he watching Baby <laughs> that, Reindeer with both that, wives? That's what like, you think about. Well, yeah, I know. I'm just thinking the logistics of <laughs> because like this guy is living his life that way. You know what I mean? That's what you. Th- oh my god. Okay. Maybe yeah, that wow. was what broke him. We went. I can't, I can't do it. I can't watch Baby <laughs> Reindeer twice. I've already seen episode four. I can't do it anymore. I'm sorry. I've got a girlfriend. Oh, yeah, I'm married. This whole thing. I've Gaila. got two houses. I don't know how to pay for the rent. I'm so broke. Gayla, thank you very much for sharing. Do we want to keep going? Because yeah. I'm enjoying these. Well, everyone just keeps topping each other. Like, they're brutal stories, but I mean, I can't stop listening. Uh, Joanne in Melbourne, how did you catch the cheetah? Um, well, it was my best friend, and she was um, telling me that she's seeing someone and describing everything about my husband. And I didn't jerry at the time because she was so religious and into her prayers, being a Muslim and all that. And never in my righteous mind did I think that she would cheat with my my husband. Oh, so it was your and friend cheating. I caught cheating. him in the act. You caught him in the act? What happened? Oof. Well, I came home one day, and she's over my house. Mm-hmm. And um, I walked in, and she's putting um, her clothes together. Oh, yeah, right. Oh. So, gee whiz. Yeah. I mean, that's no good. And that, mm. I always think when you hear those stories, it's like, yeah, you lose it too there, right? You you lose your best friend and your husband. Mm. But Joanne, hit. you do sound better off without them both. Heidi in Brizzy, good evening. How did you catch the cheetah? Um, well, just by 
good old mobile phone. Um, it was my husband, and we just emigrated to Australia from the UK with our little two-year-old little boy. And, um, yes, yeah, basically I went out drinking, came home, passed out, and there was messages on his phone from the lovely lady who used to look after our little two-year-old son in the UK. Oh, the, kin- the, the, the babysitter. Yeah, well, not babysitter. She was, um, you know, like you get kindies here. They, yeah, like from kindy. The kindy oh. teacher. Not the kindy teacher. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know. And oh. she was due to come out. Um, so we'd been in the country. We got here September, um, found out in the October, and she was due to come out and stay with us in the February. <laughs> Oh. oh, so she was from the UK. You'd then come oh, over, yeah. and then she was going to come, and you were going to host her. Oh, can you imagine yeah. what would have happened if if it got to that point? What oh, was the reasoning it, for it the does get worse. for the hope? Probably write a book, but yeah, she. Um, I did find out that she had also been telling people in England that um, she had a son who was my son. She was trying to say that my son was oh. her son was kidnapped and taken to Australia by his dad. I was like, um. Sorry. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, lots to it. It's very exciting. But that was back in two thousand eleven. With the so. with the hosting of her coming here Ooh. to Australia, was that the Ooh. husband? Like, was that? I'm assuming that was the husband's idea, and he was like, "Hey, why don't we have her stay over here, and why don't we bring Kathy over? She can just crash Ooh. in our bed or whatever." Or just a few weeks. Yeah. Well, yeah. She was. She was like, "Oh, because she used to look after our son, and she idolised our son, and um, so it was like, she's like, oh, I want to travel Australia.'" Um, and but, sleep with you your know. husband. So, like, yeah, yeah, how yeah, how's it all going yeah. now? Are you still together? What happened? No, well, I stayed for five years afterwards, just stupidly. But we were in Sony us in Australia, and all our family and friends are back in the UK. So, I was like, oh, I'll give it a go. But yeah, it after five years, it's just like, yeah, no, that's not really no. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, but, it finished. Yeah. Oh, you, what a story! That's incredible. It it does give teachers pet. Vibes. It does. That's what my mm, brain went to, Bill. Mm, it does. Like the teacher mm. and then, yeah, I'm kind of happy that Heidi is out of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah. My, so my mind went elsewhere. Just those like babysitter movies. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Yeah, like when you hear kindergarten teacher, you go, nice. <laughs> <laughs> no. Can you call yourself Australian if you haven't seen this meme? What is the charge? Eating a meal? A succulent Chinese meal? Ah, yes. I see that you know your judo well. (laughs) The dude getting arrested for ducking out on the bill at a Chinese restaurant in the 90s. Well, apparently now it's going to be made into a feature film. And one of the people in the film is the reporter who was there on the day. Chris, uh, you were covering it. The initial arrest. Did you have any idea when you were doing this back in the 90s that it was going to be such an iconic Aussie moment? Guys, no one could have predicted what was going to happen that day. It was just an extraordinary and the most sensational theatrical performance I think I've ever seen <laughs> on, on TV, on stage, anywhere. Me and my camera were nearby when we, we heard it going on on the, on the police scanner and we spun the ca- car around. We were pretty close and we arrived Whoa. and there were cops everywhere, cars everywhere. The street was blocked off. And then they brought Jack out. And what a stellar performance. Academy Award winning stuff. So, Chris, I've heard when he says, eating a meal. A succulent Chinese meal. He actually had a leg to stand on because he didn't actually do anything wrong. But he, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he was. Uh, it's, it's, they're calling it the greatest wrong for the rest since Julian Assange. You know, he, he was basically dragged out of that uh, restaurant. He was, um, was you know, and there were plenty of police around doing it. I mean, I, th- I counted six or seven just t- taking control of him at one point. And yesterday, beautifully at this reunion, we um, we met one of the police officers, a guy called Stoll Watt. He was a senior sergeant at the time, uniformed. You can see him. He's on every poster. He's the guy with the moustache in the background arresting uh, uh, young Jack at the time. And and he sort of confirmed a few of the details with us. In fact, funnily enough, we, you know, can, can we say this on radio? Of course, that he famous can. line. Yeah, um, get your hand off <laughs> my, my penis. penis. See yeah. that chap over there? Okay. Get your hand off my penis. Exactly. And the officer that was accused of doing that was this fella, Stoll Watt. And he said, Stoll said, when he finally caught up with Jack. He said, I didn't touch your penis. And Jack said, 
I know. I made it up. <laughs> <laughs> but but Chris, did Sol know his judo well? Sol did know his judo well. He was um, he was senior sergeant in the um, special offences squad, so he was like a a SWAT trained police officer. So that's why he raced down there. I've been a journalist now for thirty plus years at Channel Seven and done some amazing stories. Had a great run. I've done Mandela and Princess Di, the Queen, and Bosnia and Afghanistan and Gaza and the whole lot. Right. The only story anyone ever stops me and wants to talk about is Jack <laughs> bloody Carlton. It's incredible. Um, Chris, you, you mentioned uh, that there was a reunion at the Chinese restaurant where it all mm. went down. My question before you go is, who got the bill? Yeah, exactly. Well, I made sure I did a dine and dash before the bill came out. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those credit cards you've got, mate. That'll work fine. It was, oh. it was a lovely, lovely day. I'd wanted to see him for 33 years. Finally got the chance to meet him yesterday and and uh, and it was just great. I got him. To, I actually stole one of the menus and I got him to sign it for me. So oh, wow. Autographed uh, souvenir. Oh, oh man. wow. You should have got a few and we could auction, auction them off. That yeah. would be amazing. Well, Chris, thank you so much for chatting with us. We are so excited for this doco. Thank you. Absolute pleasure, guys. Thanks. 13, 20, 14. Did someone snap in front of you? Maybe it was a parent, teacher, maybe someone at work. I saw a real beauty the other day, Ben and Bell. I was at a wedding, and um, the photographer was trying to arrange all the guests for one of those big group photos. Every wedding has that. Yeah, and like, you know, everyone always says, "Oh, family photos are kind of stressful." Until you get married, you don't realize how stressful it is because you're like trying to like pluck different family members, and it is a bit annoying, especially when you've just done the big thing. Um, so the ceremony's over. Obviously, everyone's like, "Oh my god, it's so beautiful!" Like, you know, everyone's just chatting. You know, huge relief. So everyone was sort of talking amongst themselves. And um, the photographer's like, all right, guys, we're just going to get a, a bit of a group photo. We're just we can move over there. We're just gonna... Silence! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. He was like, <laughs> he, he, he clearly, I've really hurt my throat, by the way. Are you okay? He's <laughs> like, I can't talk. You need a drink? You need a drink? Yeah, I'm just going to have a drink. Have a little bit of water. That's how, how hard he went. He screamed silence so loud, and you could hear a pin drop, and then he tried to play it off like it was a joke. Mm. Like, it was so cringy, because he was like, huh, I was just kidding, obviously. No, I was just like, get your attention. But... I'm like a fun photographer. <laughs> yeah, but it was like, clearly, he just didn't, he had a very yeah. short fuse, people weren't listening to him, and then he shouted silence at the top of his lungs. I feel like I've cracked it a few times in front of you guys, but I do it in the way that I think a lot of uh, women do. Where I just, if I have a piece of paper, I just go, okay, well, you just do it then. Fine. Mm. And I just mm. leave. Yeah. I reckon and- <laughs> snapping for me is like a level above that. 13, 24, 10. Did they snap? Deborah in Adelaide, what happened? Hi, guys. So I had to do some shopping for the kitchen, like tea, coffee, sugar. And I saw Scotch fingers were half price. So, of course, I got a pack. And the next day, the boss came into my office and said, where did those scotch fingers come from? And I said, oh, I just added them, you know, to the credit card. Mm. And he snapped, like, lost it. I, I don't buy biscuits for the office. And I was, like, to the point where I was like, oh, do you want $2.50? Like, yeah, I mean, it's just some scotch finger biscuits. It. Chill out, man. Some scotch- well, are we talking, like, punching the drywall or just really, like, raising the voice? Just raising the voice. Yeah. Losing it. Yeah. 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 It's And you know when people, when they've, like, lost it and then they, like, realise that they got to reel it in quickly. The best is when they try and make a joke about it. Mm. <laughs> That's still my favourite. All right, 13, 24, 10. Prizes up for grabs for our favourite caller. Did someone snap? 13, 24, 10. Give us a buzz. Danielle in Sydney. What happened? Hi, guys. Um, this was about 10 years ago, and I was actually at the local shopping centre, and I saw a parent from my son's school. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went over to say hello and just ask her something about the school canteen, and she just lost it and started screaming at me. What was the matter with her? Why did she snap? Uh, well, 
she used to run the school canteen yeah. and I was actually taking over. And I, it was just a, a basic question. Yeah. And her poor husband, he was so embarrassed. He actually walked away. She was screaming at the top of her lungs at me. I didn't even know what it was about. It, it was sounds just, like she was jealous up. that you were taking over yeah. the canteen and from I, her. You know, I feel like a, a proper canteen lady's got a good set of lungs, mm-hmm. you know, because you, you have to call out mm-hmm. when it's, you know, last call and that sort of thing. I still remember my primary school canteen Yeah, lady. literally the same. Really? Isn't that Our, weird? Ours was just all well, the mums would fill in and do it. We didn't have a person. It was just mums would come and do it. I think it. ours were mums, but it was like... It was like it was a head mum. You remember? You <laughs> yeah, there was like a the, main mum yeah. that was like. I'm pretty sure that mum would have been employed because it's like a full time job. Right? Yeah. No, yeah. I was so just like prepare all the food and stuff. I just, it was so exciting when like my mum would be like, "Next Friday, I'm on Tuck Shop," and I'd be like, "Oh my god!" And then you just run there and try and get free stuff. Graham joins us in Melbourne. Did someone snap? Hey guys, long time listener and first time caller. Oh, good yeah. on you, Graham. Hi. It's Graham. Hi. So when I was in year seven, um, I was in science class and, yeah, I let one rip and the teacher went off at night at me and pretty much said I was a disgusting little thing and they get the hell out of the classroom. <laughs> yeah. And, that, and it must have been pretty disgusting, Graham, if the teacher had a snap over it. Must have been. Yeah, really... well, it was science class, so I think it was probably worried that it was going to be flammable. That's true. <laughs> you know, <laughs> too close to one of the bunts and burners, you could have singed one of the kids' eyebrows off. Oh, Graham, get out of here, yeah, mate. That's enough from you, Graham, you dirty bugger. Uh, Kayleen in Melbourne, uh, you liked that, did you? The fart, the fart gear. I'm glad someone's into it. Um, yeah, what happened? Did someone snap? Yes, I was working at Woolworths as a young teenager, putting myself through uni, and um, I was setting up the case. So I would start at five in the morning, so the shop opens at seven, mm-hmm. and I was cooking rotisserie chickens while setting up the case. I forgot the timer. And uh, five rods of maybe 25 chickens were overcooking and they started to fall off into the bottom of the rotisserie. Yeah. I pretty much lost most of them. Mm-hmm. And my boss went crazy, screaming her head off, took me into the cool room and started shaking me. Do you have any understanding of how much profit was lost? And then... Um, I, I Yeah, anyway, I broke down. But then the next day... Um, the store manager came in yeah. and they were partnered, the deli manager and the store manager. And the store manager said, Kaylee, I'm really sorry. You know, please don't tell anyone. You know, don't sue her, blah, blah, blah. Which Whoa. I <laughs> yeah. That's that a wild thing, story. But- yeah. I'm I just, I can't get out of my head you getting taken into the cool room and she's shaking, shaking me like, Kayleen, you dumb like, idiot. It's like, I can't believe all those chickens. It's real cartoon. Like it's a- like mob style. Also, are you a moron? Also, yeah. I'm 14, please. Also, do you know how much profit we've lost? 25 chickens, $12 a pop, that's 300 bucks. I'm that's coming out of your paycheck. I'm going to lock you in this ice room. You're hurting me. For the rest of your shift, you're going <laughs> to... Learn a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to work until you replace stop. all of those chickens. <laughs> You're going to stop taking me. <laughs> that was Ariana Grande. And, oh, is her voice not absolutely stunning? You know I love Ariana. She's she's beautiful. She's gone through a hell of a lot. Um, and she's back in the news, actually, today. I don't know if you've seen. Um, she was on Penn Badgley's podcast, Pod Crushed, uh, the guy from Gossip Girl. And, her- and you... Yeah, and you, yes. And you, too, and you, season three, and you, four, I yep. believe. And, and also, they did part one and part two of season four. And John Tucker Must Die, the movie from about yeah. 2005. Very, <laughs> very popular actor. Yes, we're all big Penn Badgley fans. We're all pen heads here. <laughs> well, she was on his podcast, and this clip is going bonkers online because her voice changes halfway. This is not edited. This is Ariana. That's how I felt. I was like, yeah. what has happened? Um yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I've been writing a lot and maybe there's some more, but I, I would like to do a deluxe. Did she break halfway through? Yeah, kind what of. What is going on? Oh, she's Is different. that the one clip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's unedited. That's from the podcast. You can hear it. You can see it. There's a video of it. Oh my, that's a PR disaster. Can I hear that again? <laughs> that's how I felt. I was like, yeah. what has happened? Um yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I've been writing a lot and maybe there's some more. Which one's her real one? I'm assuming it's the first voice is her real voice. Correct. The yeah, first one. yeah, I don't know what's going on. I've been writing. <laughs> yeah, I've been writing a lot of songs lately. Oh, yeah. 
But she defended it. It's to help her voice when she does a lot of singing and talking. She puts a higher voice on to save her voice. Okay. No, I think it's like a character thing that she does. Yeah. Weird. What a time to tune in. The Currency Quiz! Charity in Melbourne, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Pretty good. You want to win some cash? I want to win some cash. Whether or not I will is depending on how hard the question is. Well, <laughs> there are three questions in front of us. Now, this is the currency quiz, okay? So we have a big wheel here, lots of currencies on the wheel. We've got euros, you know, British pounds, Japanese yen, Russian rubles, Zimbabwe dollars, so many more. Uh, we're going to give it a spin, and we're going to see how much you're playing for tonight, okay? All right. Make it a good one. All right, here we go. <laughs> Thousand Iranian reals. Woo, I've got no idea what that is in dollars. Hundred thousand dollars. How much is that? That's three dollars fifty six Australian, I believe. <clears throat> yeah, but let's not do the conversions yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, it's still hundred thousand, you know? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, three questions. Charity, Audi is officially Australia's cheapest supermarket, twenty five percent cheaper than Coles and Woolies. If something costs $100 at Coles and Woolies, how much would it cost at Audi if it was 25% cheaper? $75. Done it. Uh, happy sweet 16th birthday to Camp Rock. Camp Rock. <laughs> Which of the Jonas Brothers starred in the movie? Uh, Nick? Well, yeah, technically that's correct. Yeah. All of them? Yeah, yes. wow. yeah no, it's correct, right. charity. Sorry. All of them. Oh, you, I mean, you could do this. You could win a hundred thousand reals right here if you get this right. Woo! Justin Timberlake got arrested for drink driving this week. What do the yeah. ladies sing in Senorita? Sorry, what did I, I missed the end of that? What do the ladies sing in Senorita? You know that. Let me think about oh. you. And all the ladies go. I don't know what I'm thinking about. Mm. Really living with you or something? Whoa! I don't know. Whoa! Sitting up, can I leave with you? Right. And then the ladies go, I don't know what I'm thinking about. Really leaving with you. <laughs> 100,000 Iranian reals. Charity, congratulations, you've won. Maybe you can use the money to bail out Justin Timberlake. Nah, he's got enough. He's drink driving, not your fault. Well done, Charity. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.